Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous videos, we learned that at times, Mars and Earth are at opposition, or better said, Mars is at opposition relative to Earth and Sun. Now the question is, how often does that occur? How much time elapses between the one opposition and the next opposition? And keeping in mind that it takes one year for Earth to make one orbit around the Sun, and it takes Mars 1.88 Earth years to make one trip around the Sun. So let's say that at this moment, we see Mars at opposition to Earth. When will the next opposition occur? Of course, Earth will get ahead of Mars and eventually will catch up to Mars again until they're perfectly aligned. So at one point, when they're, when they're at the next opposition, Earth will have completed one entire trip around the Sun more than Mars has. So when we come over here, we can let n equal the number of Earth orbits and m equal the number of Mars orbits from one opposition to the next. And so the next opposition will then occur when n minus m is equal to 1, when n is 1 greater than m, when n, the number of Earth orbits around the Sun, is 1 more than the number of Mars orbits. So when, for that, to calculate that, we're going to need the rate of each planet. So the rate of the Earth is 1 orbit per year, which is called the Earth's rate. And then, oh, this should be rate right here, all right? And r sub m is one orbit for every 1.88 years, which is then known as Mars's rate. So now we need an equation. So what we can say here is that the rate of Earth times the amount of time that it takes to get to the next opposition minus the rate of Mars times the time that it takes to get to the next opposition. So these two t's are equal to the same. The difference of that should equal 1. All right, now we have to solve that for t, for time. So let's plug in the equation. So r sub e is 1 orbit per year, so that's 1 orbit per 1 year, times time minus the rate of Mars, which is 1 orbit per 1.88 years, and that is equal to 1. Now notice, we have orbit per year times time. Now time will be in years, so years will cancel out, so we're left with orbit. So this should be one orbit if we're going to put in the proper units. Okay, now we want to get rid of the denominators, so we can multiply everything by 1.88 years. So if we multiply the left side... Am I missing a T? Am I missing a T? I am certainly missing a T. That's right. Thank you for letting me know. There we go. Now we're good. Now we can go ahead and multiply everything by 1.88 years. And of course, we need to do the same thing on the other side. So we multiply this times 1.88 years. Okay, then on the left side, notice that years will cancel out. And we end up with 1.88 orbits times time. So 1.88 orbits times time minus here the 1.88 years cancel out. And we're ending up with 1 orbit times time equals 1.88 orbit times years. So next what we're going to do is we're going to factor out t and subtract the 2. So now we end up with t times 1.88 orbits minus 1 orbit. That would be 0 0.88 orbits. So when we factor out the t, we get 1.88 orbits minus 1 orbit, which is 0.88 orbits, equals 1.88 orbits times years. See that? And then finally, we can divide both sides by 0.88 orbits. So divide this by 0.88 orbits and move it over here. So we get 0.88 orbits. Like this. And then notice we have t is equal to 1.88 orbits times years divided by 0.88 orbits. Orbits cancel out. And now with a calculator, we will end up with calculating t in number of years. So 1.88 divided by 0.88 equals, oh, 
divided by 0.88 equals 2.136 years. So T equals 2.136 years. Now that's of course the average time because depending upon where in the orbit this is occurring, notice at this point Mars moves slower and Earth will move faster. Over here, Earth will move slower and Mars will move faster. So it's not quite the same number from one opposition to the next opposition, but on average, it'll be 2.136 years. So what we can probably say that it's somewhere between two years and one month and two years and two months between oppositions. So when you see Mars directly across from us and the Sun being directly behind us so that we're lined up perfectly, where Mars is the opposition, the next time the same event will occur will be a little bit more than two years. So every two years and one or every two years and two months, Mars will be at opposition. Then Mars will be the closer to us relative to where we are in the orbit. And then we get the best view on Mars. And Mars will then be the brightest it will be over the next two years. And that's how we can tell and that's how we can figure out how much time there is between the opposition of Mars from one opposition to the next opposition. And that is how it's done. Well, you can make it cleaner, but I like to put in the orbits because that way you can see how it cancels out and how T ends up in years. So that's kind of why I did it. Well, that's a lot of orbit lighting. <laughs> yeah, but it just it makes it more accurate, right? In that respect. They could cancel out the years long ago too. If you just got rid of the orbits and the years, it'd be a lot cleaner. It would be cleaner, but at least that way you can see that it does come out and T does come out in years. That's why I incorrect if you <laughs> mathematically because it's got rid of the orbits and the years on the left side of the, yeah. equation, the, left side of the equation. Mm, I thought it made it clear. I don't know. I like it this way. <laughs> no.